Um, thanks for having me. Um, hi, Bri. Hi. <laughs> um, a little bit about me um, before I go on is uh, just to say I'm not like digitally trained. Um, I'm just I was a student activist, became a campaigner, and then sort of ended up in this role where I started taking on digital work. But that's because it's got this amazing, attractive edge to it, and um, hopefully there's some lessons here that um, are more applicable to you guys, not just Greenpeace. Um, we'll see. So uh, I'm going to talk about creating your own media moment, um, and I'm going to try and do that in the next quarter of an hour uh, with questions. I'm not sure. You can tell me when to start. Um, but yeah, I'm going to talk about Ice Climb in particular, which um, happened in July last year. Um, so it's moved, we've moved on a little bit since then, but um, I'll refer back to it because we're still using it a lot as a case study in Greenpeace. And it's still featuring in broadcast. Um, I think it's on the, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a, a climate change show in the States and it's about to air on there. So it's still, still coming up, which is really exciting. But anyway, carry on. You might, have, uh, you might have even seen it from here, I'm not sure. Um, but we, uh, we did something with this building, which most people are aware of. Um, the building, not necessarily what we did. What we did was um, we decided to uh, use the building and the particular day as an opportunity to communicate our message. Um, you can see some numbers here. There's a lot of screens in this room, so I'm sure you can see them. Um, <laughs> there's, uh, yeah, something about this that we hadn't really done before, which was we kind of achieved the closest we've ever come to a bit of a media blockout, a roadblock, um, which you used to be able to buy on TV um, when your ad played on every channel at the same time. Um, you can do it still today uh, with the goodwill of the amazingly democratic internet um, if you uh, really capture people's imagination. So here's how we attempted to do that. Um, I'm going to break it down into five simple points, the first one being authenticity. Um, these all might sound really obvious, but we need to hit ourselves over the head with these words on a day-to-day -day basis to make sure that we get it right. Um, so, you know, uh, this is the team. Um, these are the guys who climbed. Um, you'll notice uh, that they're all women, um, if you can sort of make out in the picture, which is a little bit different for uh, Greenpeace Action. We do boats and beards and banners really well. Um, <laughs> they're quite beautiful things as well, but um, you know we are real people, and so we decided to break through some stereotypes here. That's often a, a good move to make. Um, and uh, these guys were all uh, you know, suitably skilled and equipped. Um, and they decided to dress themselves. Sometimes we have um, Greenpeace jumpsuits. These guys chose their own costumes. They used their own Twitter handles. Um, they were the voice of that day, um, not some kind of sign-off process that you can imagine could be quite cumbersome. Um, you can see here, oh, I'm holding this too, too low. Uh, this is Ali, Ali Garrigan. She's from the UK. And um, you know she was posting tweets as she went up. So it was a, a few of the others. Four of them had Twitter accounts. Um, which was really exciting and different for us because normally we are a little bit scared of, of how things are going to go but social media is about real people and these guys were there for a real reason. Um, the next big thing was tension. Um, this one had a lot of tension um, and I think that with any good story you kind of need to have a sense of trajectory um, and a sense of build towards some kind of uh, resolution. You want to know what will happen next. Those, those five words, you know, and then what happened, are going to be uh, critical to anyone's attention span, especially in a busy world where the internet isn't actually being used um, for everyone's individual message, but it's being used for productivity or entertainment on individuals' uh, agenda. So, yeah, this one was really big for us. Of course, for us, um, as in Greenpeace, <coughs> breaking the law isn't necessarily a um, red line. So uh, it's easier for us to build tension out of an event like this. Uh, I'm not sure how many other people in the room can say that about their uh, organization, but um, there are other ways. You don't need to necessarily break the law it, as such or take any real risks. Um, you can uh, do this with just an unfolding story of any kind. Um, crack on. I think uh, for us, the jeopardy um, <coughs> of will they make it was our central question. And um, to be completely honest, we didn't know whether they were going to make it or not. And that kind of tension in our whole program um, really caught a lot of uh, people's imaginations. Urgency um, is pretty critical. Uh, we often think we have a really important message, um, but we often forget that people 
aren't interested in hearing about it until it's important for them to. Um, uh, Brie, I'm, I'm sure we'll mention this um, as well, uh, but people are, you know, if something's happening, say, um, we work on climate, we're looking at the Paris COP, um, we're not talking about it to our supporters right now because it's not an urgent issue. Climate change is an urgent issue. What happens at the Paris, Paris COP isn't urgent for someone who doesn't even know what the Paris COP is yet. Um, so for this, we were talking very much about trying to uh, communicate issues around oil being um, derived from the icy seas in the Arctic, particularly by uh, the uh, UK's biggest oil company, Shell. And we wanted to make this an urgent issue. So we kind of had to create a story in which it was urgent. Um, and that was to send these guys up a very tall building um, to see if they could make it in a day. Um, we live streamed it. Uh, and you could see that it was um, from a first person point of view. We were really trying to make this uh, very tangible, very relatable. Um, and this is all done with uh, you know, technology that's readily available. Most of it's free, most of it's in your pocket. Um, so it's nothing like too fancy. It's not as awesome as all these screens. Um, it's, uh, it's pretty straightforward, actually. And uh, the urgency of watching something as it unfolds and watching it build up to a particular point in tension in real time um, cannot be underestimated. Uh, you know, don't wait until your event has finished to press release it. Um, tweet about it as it starts. You know, don't uh, wait until it's all over before you can tell the story. Sometimes you don't necessarily have to know how it ends before you can start the storytelling process. Um, this is a little bit of like technical background, um, and I'm not sure how important all of this is, so um, feel free to come back to it in the questions. So I'll kind of race through it. But we kind of had a, a, a strategy for our channels, which I'll break down here. Um, the website was number one, because for us, we want to take people on a longer term journey to uh, use their you know, created ad, uh, agency um, to affect change on this particular issue. Um, so we broke it down into bringing people across from Twitter, uh, we actually broke the story on Twitter. We didn't break the story. We let it build on Twitter first because people could see the climbers from London, London Bridge. Uh, and then we sort of let it go from there. We sent email out to our uh, loyal supporters. That was our, um, uh, like a, a bit of a deal breaker for us is because you need to be um, good to the people you're closest to. Uh, Facebook was really important. And there's a lot you can do there in terms of targeting. Um, and we were doing that with Twitter as well. Uh, flyers, we actually took flyers to places where we knew influencers were going to be. So we were at Old Street Roundabout, the Silicon Roundabout, if anyone actually uses that phrase. And um, <laughs> other places where we knew there were going to be tech companies, we knew there were going to be people using social media. We were at uh, London Bridge as well. Um, so we were actually trying to uh, get there before then. We had these really cute little flyers that looked just like an iPhone with a picture of what was going on on it um, so that people got the point. We used the existing networks that we had. Unfortunately, due to the security protocols in this particular preparation of the activity, um, we couldn't tell people about this beforehand. But as soon as we could tell people, we told everyone we knew. Uh, a lot of our colleagues overseas were a little bit miffed that we hadn't told them sooner. Um, the live stream itself uh, was really important to keeping that story and keeping people coming back. Uh, I'll talk about that briefly um, at the end. But um, we haven't seen anything like this before um, in terms of live stream. SMS. These are all coming up very strangely on the screen, but the SMS is um, definitely very fast and very effective, uh, and people could forward that on as well. It shouldn't be underestimated. Press releases and um, uh, phones, uh, just being there, being on the call for people was still really important, but it definitely wasn't a priority for our digital strategy. Um, lastly, the form itself um, was also available in Twitter, uh, which then gave people another reason to do an email. They got an email from the website. Um, they got Facebook, sent people to the website, and back to Twitter as well. So it was a bit of a, like, um, uh, turbine, if you like, a bit of a loop system where people were getting uh, the same thing across different channels. Um, so yeah, content is boss rather than king. Um, it doesn't have to be gendered, but uh, it's really what are you talking about? You know, um, if you don't have a really great story, if you don't have something that's really engaging, um, for like sometimes in your heart of hearts, you know whether or not something's going to be engaging or not, um, and you can decide that pretty early on. So for us, this is pretty key. Um, we have to look at each piece that we're putting out and say, is this content going to travel? And are we going to put all of our resources behind it? Um, so for us, we were trying to use inclusive, <coughs> authentic content that communicated the tension of what was going on. Um, you can see here that this is a little bit of behind the scenes. We were sending some of these pictures out as well. This is our studio where we were producing the live stream. Um, and you know, in, in social media content rules, uh, there is nothing more exciting than a story that's unfolding. 
um, and people will really get into that, and the best storyteller will win. Um, if you bring everyone behind the scenes, um, they can become a storyteller too, so that they can tell their audiences what's actually going on. And it's not just your audience that are important, but your audience's audience is now uh, a kind of another um, uh, out, uh, outreach that you've got going on, but it's indirect because you're allowing people to tell the story on your behalf. Um, as I said, the best storyteller wins. Uh, we had the best story um, and the best way we could tell it. And because none of the broadsheets uh, online could tell the story faster than we were telling it, um, they uh, eventually started calling us up and saying, can we have your live stream? Which was really polite because I don't know if you guys do HTML, but you can just steal an iframe. Um, so they called and we said, OK. Uh, and they put it on the Telegraph. And then after that, it went on into every national uh, broadsheet uh, website which was really helpful because for us, particularly in the Telegraph, that's not our traditional support base, um, believe it or not. <laughs> and uh, it was really exciting to be able to crack that nut in a way that meant that not only were they asking us for our content, but it was uh, unfiltered and uncensored and unedited. It was our raw story, um, our propaganda, if you like, it was coming from us, which was very exciting. Um, you can also see it on a few of the other channels. Um, Simplicity is super important. Like It has to be really simple. Uh, at the end of the day, people need to get it. They need to get it fast. They don't have a lot of time. It's not because they're stupid. It's because people are busy. Um, and so it's really important to keep things very, very simple. For us, that meant one person, one job. So if you need to send a tweet, get someone to send tweets. If you need to respond to tweets, get someone to respond to tweets. Don't expect the same person to be able to do every single job. And I'm not sure of your job titles in the room, but I imagine if you're a comms person or if, if, if it's your responsibility to communicate something, actually that's an extremely complex task. And uh, you need to be able to break that up into roles that you can articulate and manage people's expectations. I think we had 11 people working on Twitter alone, and that was just one account. Um, we had simple tech. Uh, we were using phones. Um, the four is more reliable than the five. And uh, we, we found that, you know, just go with whatever works. Um, it was literally phones stuck to people's helmets. Um, and we plan the content as much as possible. It <coughs> might sound really obvious to start at the start and end at the beginning, but if you don't know what the story's going to start like and you don't know what the end is going to look like, then you're not really going to know how to tell the story. You kind of need to know what's that picture going to look like. What is the concept going to feel like in people's mind as you begin to start the storytelling process? And what is resolution going to feel like? What is, um, what is the resolve going to sound like in the music that you're singing? Um, so that's kind of the breakdown. Um, I've got loads of like numbers, if that helps, on uh, how we did, what was, uh, what was new for us. Um, but I think the uh, kind of philosophical uh, concept that we all came away with was the fact that we were able to not just do a better job than anything we could do with traditional media um, in terms of getting a quarter of a million live viewers on an average um, watch length of eight minutes. Um, with uh, most people, about 60% of people came back a second time throughout the day. Um, but uh, we were also able to tell our story in a way that wasn't edited or filtered out by the um, kind of broadcast model. So that was also really exciting. It was being um, conveyed and retold by people rather than media much faster than we had done before. And as it happened, um, which brought a lot of people in, it was the still today the highest sign-up rate of new people we've ever had to a campaign. And we were only asking them to um, add their notional support. It wasn't a particular uh, kind of ask to a politician or anything like that. We're just saying, look, if you appreciate what these guys are doing, send them a message of support and, um, and you'll be uh, included in the campaign. So I'll leave it there. Um, if there are any questions uh, or time for that, uh, we, can, we can have a go now. We are doing so well for time, probably because I'm not speaking. <laughs> Another lesson we learned from last year. How cool was that? Why am I wasting my time working in a think tank when I could be doing cool stuff like climbing up buildings and <laughs> hanging out banners? And okay, everybody, everybody really enjoyed the pirate radio shout-outs that I did a couple of events back when I was in the chair, so I'm going to do them again. <laughs> Ross Bailey, who's not here, big shout-out to Ross Bailey. So he's not here. He's looking at the... Uh, hashtag, he really hopes that someone can storify it, because I, th I think he might be driving at the same time as looking at the hashtag, <laughs> so he can't watch the live stream. Uh, Vicky, who I can see over in the corner, she says, one person, one job, 
wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> I think we, we feel where you're coming from. Okay, look, back to the speakers. Uh, urgency, jeopardy. Um, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of urgency at think tanks, but maybe that's more like internal than external. It's like people want you to do stuff quickly, but it doesn't always feel like we're moving particularly urgently. And jeopardy, I don't know, I never really feel that much of a sense of jeopardy as I'm sort of scanning an executive sum <laughs> summary, I don't know. Um, <laughs> um, but Brie, you are definitely in the urgency and jeopardy business, right? Well, yes, possibly. 